On this week's episode of Whitetail Cribs, we're headed to Iowa to visit with Brad Beaver and Nick Cox. Get ready to check out their bachelor pad full of giant sheds, 186 inch full velvet whitetail, bucks from all over the Midwest, and for all you sports fans, a baseball bat signed by none other than Kyle Schwarber. Hope you guys enjoy this episode. Here we go. Morning. Come on in. I am Brad Beaver. I'm Nick Cox. And this is, uh, this is where we live. This is a deer that I shot. This is actually a really cool story. It's not a huge deer, but a pretty good Indiana deer. It was the day before I was supposed to leave on my first freelance job ever. And I was still in Indiana. I didn't have a single deer to hunt, and I got a cell cam pick of this deer at 2.30 in the afternoon. Um, went in, did a hanging hunt, killed him, and left for Iowa the next day. Um, so it was a pretty, pretty awesome experience. You know, it wasn't a deer like Obviously now that I would love to kill, but it was kind of one of those meant to be type things. So I you know, made it happen and luckily it, it came together really well. So I'm really proud of this deer. So yeah, this is my office. Uh, this is where I do most of my work. Uh, so I am a content creator in the outdoor industry. A lot of graphic design, photography, video work. This is from a bat from my now, I would say friend Kyle Schwarber. I met Kyle a couple years ago, hunted with him in Ohio last year. Um, and he sent me this bat that he signed. So big Cub fan, big baseball fan. So that stays in my office. But I just point out to Nick, I forgot about uh, having this in here. This is actually my first deer ever. We were just out shooting does, basically. And my grandpa came up, he's like, oh, it's a buck. And I'm like, nice. So first deer ever. So this is kind of our main living area. This is where we keep all of, I'd say, like the main sheds, mounts, all of that good stuff. So this deer kind of kick-started my quote unquote career What's cool about this deer is like, it was an outfitter, uh, Goblin Grand Outfitters in Nebraska, which a lot of times you don't have a lot of like history. You don't like feel fulfilled if you were to kill a deer. Like it feels like you just go and shoot a deer on an outfitter. But this deer, we actually went the day before, scouted, found him, and kind of put a game plan together to kill him. And what's unique about him kind of, like I said, starting off my career is we were semi live on Instagram when I killed this deer. So it felt like there was more people along on the hunt than there actually, it was just Austin and I. But we saw him the day before season. Actually day one, we saw him very far away. And then day two, we did a hanging hunt to get closer and ended up killing him. Um, what's cool though, again, being semi-live is like, my shot was awful on this deer. I hit him like in the neck. Out there in Nebraska, it's so open. It's so hard to get close to whitetails if you're in a tree. Uh, so he jumped a, he jumped a fence at like what I thought was 50 yards and was running into this hay field. I actually stopped him and then drew and just guessed the range. So ended up hitting him in the neck, but again, it was semi live. So it just seemed like there was a lot of support and everything. And it was divided. Like, I don't know if he's going to die or like he's a dead deer. So it was really cool. Didn't sleep much that night. Found him the next morning, ended up going 186. That's what we roughed him at. I haven't scored him again because I'm afraid to but I'm just gonna call it 186. But full velvet whitetail was always on my bucket list, so this buck uh, means a lot to me because of that. My eight point up here at the top left means a lot to me too. That's the first buck I ever killed in Iowa. Um, moved to Iowa in 2018 from Indiana to work for Midwest Whitetail. That was the first buck we killed, or I killed, on Midwest Whitetail. I was with Jared Mills at the time. What I like about that deer, again, first buck in Iowa, but also we, called to that deer, it was November 30th. It was the day before shotgun season came in. And we called to that deer so much. And usually November 30th, they're not very you know responsive to calls. Um, but being the last day of the season, we said, you know, we have nothing to lose. So we might as well call this deer. So we rattled, snort wheezed, rattled again, snort wheezed again. And finally he just had enough and came in. Uh, and I heart shot him at like 20 yards. But what was cool about that deer is it kind of pushed the envelope of what we thought we could do that time of year, calling the deer. Um, again, usually you like kind of hesitant to call the deer late or early, but we just said we have nothing to lose. Let's see what happens. And he ended up coming in. So that one means a lot to me. It actually ended up on Realtree's Monster Bucks. Um, so that was cool. I, I know growing up, always watched Monster Bucks. Everybody did. You want to talk about your Indiana deer? Yeah. Yeah, I can talk about this one. Nothing crazy, not a giant or anything. I think he went like mid 120s, but I was a seventh grader and it was my first bow kill. Um, my dad told me, he said, you know, if you, if you go out and you shoot a pretty decent buck with your bow here this first year, you know, I'll, I'll mount it for you. And uh, my dad took me out of football practice early um, and I went out and two hours later, first night in, I ended up killing him and that was probably one of the coolest days 
uh, I've had in the woods. This buck means a lot to me. One, it's my first buck on my own like lease or farm in Iowa. Like I said, when I first moved to Iowa, you always have those aspirations of owning a farm or, or leasing a farm that you can control. So once we got the lease in 2019 or 2020, he was the first buck that showed up that was like, that's a shooter. So to be able to kill him because of, since day one on that farm, he was our number one hit lister. That's pretty special to me. Also my biggest buck to date, I would say, score wise, 186 is bigger. I would say he's massively bigger. I mean, score on paper, no, but I would consider him my biggest buck. Like I said, not much of a story. There's not much history with him. We don't have his sheds. We have, you know, summers where the trail camera photos, but for whatever reason, he means a lot to me just because kind of that, he just represents Iowa, like the, the Iowa whitetail to me. He's just a brute, so. And then this deer I think is going to mean more to me if we can do it, but this is a buck we call Rookie. Rookie showed up as a, what we think a three-year-old, and my lease partner and I at the time, my buddy Josh, uh, decided to pass him because we're like, he's only three. And then Rookie disappeared after shotgun season on the farm. We thought he was dead. And then he showed back up this year, so year two on the lease. We're, we'll be going into year three on the lease. Um, and this is what he looked like this year. Showed up, we were unsure if it was him or not. And then after that, it was basically trying to just find his sheds was the main goal after that. I didn't expect to find these sheds, honestly. And I definitely didn't expect to find them where I did. He was actually 20 yards from that morning we spooked him. A little more than that, 50 yards from. He was within 100 yards of both setups. Right, both, he's basically in between both of the setups, which it just seemed too obvious that they would be there, but there they were. So talk about deer that like mean a lot to you. This deer's still alive and I think he means more to me than any of them. But that story's obviously yet to be told. So uh, I said earlier, we have a lot of sheds. Uh, I'm a huge shed hunter, Nick and Nick too, but we just have, it seems like baskets of sheds around the house. This is actually the shed pile from this spring. Like I said, it's March right now. So this is our shed pile, actually just from the one farm. Mm -hmm. We haven't even walked. We've got a couple of farms we've walked. Uh, and then back here was the shed pile from this farm last year. Um, so we've got some good ones in here. It's, it's cool to, we kind of just put all of our sheds on this end table this time of year because it's cool to go through and kind of put the puzzle pieces together, so to speak. Uh, but this is a really big deer. We're looking forward to hunting next year. Um, we think he's three. Really nice shed. He's actually a bigger shed than I thought he was going to be when I picked it up. Uh, don't have his other side, though. I'm not going to go through all these, but this is, uh, this is our pile so far this spring. Like I said, we kind of just like to throw these on here this time of year and stare at them. This is a... Uh... A shed that I found actually just fell. It was up there, so it just broke uh, the other day. But this is a shed that I found at one of my farms in Indiana, actually the one I was uh, killed that deer on I was talking about earlier. Uh, it's just a little city farm, but I taped this shed at just over 80 inches. Um, and it's kind of a weird story because I hadn't hunted that in like six years, got permission on it again, went in, hung a stand, found this shed, and then ultimately like I ended up killing my other deer. Um, but when I found this one, like a week later, a buddy of mine sent me a picture of a deer um, that was a mile away. And I got looking at it closer and closer. And I'm like, I think that's the same deer. Well, sure enough, you know, fast forward into the fall. He ended up leaving his farm, showed up on my farm for one picture. And then he ultimately ended up getting hit by a car going into my farm on the highway there. But uh, he had gotten shot this year that he had this shed. Um, so he had a, you could see fletchings kind of sticking out of his shoulder. Um, which you'd think that would have really messed him up, but it made him explode. Um, I was guessing him right at like 190. He was a mainframe 10 with double drops, was just absolute giant, like a deer you don't see in Indiana very often. So it's kind of a heartbreak. I'm glad I didn't have any more history with him than I did. I mean, I, I got a lot of history in a really short amount of time, um, and built a really cool storyline with him really quickly, but I'm glad I didn't have any more than that, um, just because it was, you know, unfortunate turn of events. Um, but that's just how it goes. It's just a pretty awesome shed, my biggest one to date. And what's funny is I didn't even realize how big it was when I found it. We were kind of in a hurry. It was getting dark. We were hanging a stand. And it wasn't until I like got home and I was like comparing it to some of, other, some of my other big sheds. And I'm like, that thing is Did ridiculous. You find it in the summer? I found it in September. Speaking of sheds, this is a shed that kind of floats around this house. But one of the coolest sheds I found uh, from a buck off our lease, as you can see, like huge drop time. This deer, uh, 
we knew about the first year at our lease. We knew he was there, but we had like never seen him, had very little trail camera photos of him. Um, but the neighbor who's hunted there for his whole life knew about this deer and he said he was like seven or eight. So he's kind of like a ghost on this farm. Um, and I don't like using that word with deer, but we only had a handful of pictures of that deer. Um, didn't think we'd find a shed and stumbled across it one day last shed season. So that's one of the coolest sheds I've ever found too.